there's a kind of a, a nihilistic urge to destruction to the, what the, the social justice uh, agenda. I mean, you think about what would the communities be like if you gave them what they want. I mean, the atheist community with all of this social justice stuff thrown in is not atheism. I mean, what they do is they kind of tack this onto atheism because that because there's any number of other organizations that get joined to do um, social justice warrior stuff. And I say that because there's a distinction between social justice warriors and people who are actually doing social justice. People doing social justice out in the real world, where social justice warrior stuff is just people circling, jerking on the uh, circle, jerking on the internet. Well, it's a keyboard but warrior it, thing. Keyboard warriors. But what is what is their end game in this? And uh, I think to a large extent their end game is just destruction. Because if you look at someone like Anita Sarkeesian, now yes, we know she's a self-promoting con artist, and her real interest is that she was looking for something to sell, and she, along with the help of Josh McIntosh, glommed onto uh, feminism as a as a way to sell for herself and make money. But what if in gaming? they instituted exactly the kind of thing that Sarkeesian and uh, uh, even more outspoken Josh McIntosh wa- wants applied to gaming. That there's no violence, masculinity, there's no uh, objectification, we don't use sexualized I- images. You know, you, it, it becomes the video version of what? A tea party? That there's no conflict, there's no challenge, there's... What would you end up with? I'm not sure um, what we would end up with. And as you mentioned earlier, we were talking about this before you got on as well, is how um, all the SJW crowd has has done uh, in reference to Gamergate is that they've come in and inserted themselves into an issue where they don't have any provenance, right? They don't really have a voice because it's not about them. But what they've done is made it all about them. And they, they did the same thing. And, we've, and I, I've been talking about this a lot on my blog um, in the past about, a, you know, that, that, hey, Gamer Gators, this is nothing new. You know, we atheists, and skeptics have been dealing with this for several years now. And so when I see people come on and, and, and on and Twitter or I read a blog or I listen to a podcast that has something to do with Gamergate and people are talking about where do these people come from and what do they think they're actually doing, I just sit back and laugh because here, here, this here, is their here. MO, right? What they're doing is their, their program, their agenda – is basically the same as John Carpenter's The Thing or Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's to come into a community and make the community not only into them, but nothing like what it was. When you want it, they want to go into gaming and turn gaming into something that isn't at all like gaming. I mean, because what they're asking within the context of, of gaming, or even for that matter within the context of, of of fiction and they they want to eliminate antagonists and protagonists and you know you know rising climax and you know they just want to flatten everything out in the context of the skeptical community the first thing that the social justice warriors demanded of skeptics was what to abandon skepticism oh absolutely Yes, it was the whole listen and believe theme, right? If a woman says yeah. something, don't question it. It's got to be the truth. Well, gee, why why would I believe somebody versus somebody else based on gender? You know, I mean, <clears throat> there's, there's no method. It's, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a Sarkeesian thing, but it's basically what happened in the, in the skeptical uh, community. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody have an opinion on why the response has been so different in, uh, in gaming than it was in atheism, atheism and skepticism? Because I'm, I'm a member of the latter community, not the former, and we just kind of collectively rolled over um, and played dead to, to a large That's extent exactly and let them 
you let them get much, much further than they needed to. And See, the, they, they they walked into a, they walked into a weed whacker when they walked into gaming. I mean, they they really 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 got an unpleasant surprise. And I, I don't know because probably because I don't know enough about the gaming community why the response was so different. I I I think you hit it right on the head. Is that the skeptical community rolled over? I mean, look. There's no method to atheism. You just believe or you don't believe, and you don't really have to justify it that much unless you, you have fun doing it. Skepticism actually has a method to it. It actually has, a, 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 in, you know, in the words of the Big Lebowski, it, it has an ethos. And uh, the difference is, because it would have been very easy in the skeptical community to say, we are skeptics. Here's the methodology of skeptic. Here, here's the things that we abide by. And this is why we're rejecting the claims that you make. It would have been very simple. The structure was already in place to do that. So the explanation is sheer gutlessness, sheer cowardice, the, 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 the kind of pontificating, puffed-up asshole that tends to congregate in skeptical uh, communities just didn't have the character to even uh, to, to, to be called a misogynist, to be called a sexist, uh, as ridiculous as it is, as soon as that was deployed, oh, you hate women, you're... Here's another thing, that, that if you look at the way that the SJWs operate, and David Pakman falls into this a lot because he never makes the distinction, and someday he should drill down a little bit and think about it more. They make no distinction between harassment and legitimate mockery and satire of ridiculous positions. And within skepticism, there should be, there should be a, a tradition of satire, of, of mock. In fact, there is, of, of, of mocking idiotic things like Eric von Daniken's Chariots of the Gods and everything. But as soon as they deployed the terms like misogynist, because you made a joke about me, that you hate women, because you laughed at my ridiculous premise. They just rolled over. Well, Pacman's a weird case, because um, <laughs> I think I first ran into Pacman when he was interviewing, and please tell me if I have the wrong guy here, but he was interviewing Brianna Wu, and and Wu immediately called it, well, not immediately, but about two minutes in, called it a, a hit piece and, and, and stormed off. Uh, now, Admittedly, the threshold for getting Wu to throw a tantrum and storm off is, is so low as to be practically underground. But I don't think he was. Um, I don't think he has a particular agenda. I wouldn't identify Pacman from what little I know about him as a, as a social justice warrior shell. He just seems to be somewhat ignorant. He. he I don't know. I think he. I think he actually tries to play up to them. He's a thoughtless. He's a thoughtless kind of progressive, in, in, in that he, he he's kind of a, a, he strikes me as a daily cost kind of uh, progressive. That is to say that you know the, we we like it when your progressivism agrees with my pre-existing bias, but we're not above just tearing you down if you if you're not following our twelve-point program. No. Well, enough about David. I, I, I just don't know how David Pakman got into the middle of this because he he, he, he has no credit. He's just another freaking YouTuber, for fuck's sake. Yeah, he's, he's another manifestation of new media. Yeah. He's sort of young, um, yeah. young, young Turks light. Well, I mean, it was actually uh, people in Gamergate that raised his profile, don't you think? I mean, I'd never heard about him till. Somebody yeah, exactly. that was using the Gamergate hashtag months ago was saying, hey, look, David Packman show, he's talking about Gamergate. And so, of course, lots of us went over there to listen to him. And as I was saying earlier about him, he, he really does no research. He doesn't really, at least in my view, doesn't know what he's generally talking about. He'll have a guest on and not actually, you know, know what, why he has that guest on and what they're there for uh, to talk about. And he, because he does no research into, into their background, as I mentioned earlier about Christina 
Hoff Summers, Dr. Summers. Um, she basically owned him in that interview because he had no knowledge about anything she had ever written or even spoken about. It was apparent by just listening to his idiotic questions that he well, had yeah, no what clue as to what he was talking about. He, he's got a stock, uh, stock shtick where he, he, he says, well, you've made an assertion and let's begin. He, 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 his thing is really a, a form of the, the false equivalence that you get when you really don't know uh, anything about the subject. You know, it's the false equivalence of saying, well, you know, uh, evolution versus creationism, let's teach the controversy. And the thing that he likes is the controversy. Yes, yeah, that's, that's exactly what he is. And that's why I was saying a minute ago that he, what he, what I think that he, as far as the Gamergate piece anyway, um, what he is really interested in is making a name for himself with the progressives. Well, because yeah, he I even mean, talks and, and, about and his show say, as you, being you, you, a progressive view. You can right? say that about uh, about anyone, uh, really, but. The thing is, it just shows that there's nothing particularly special about Pac-Man because, you know, if you look at Pac-Man or, you know, even Bloomberg or the other people that have reported on Gamergate is that they have bought into the narrative and they haven't drilled down enough so that, like I said before, that you can actually make a distinction between what's harassment and what's just satire and, and mocking rigid, inflexible people. And the one and, thing and, you know, that they cannot stand is being mocked. You can fight with them, and they, that just is trying, that's trying to put out a fire with gasoline. But no, 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 no. They, they, they like being mocked. No, they like being mocked. That's their point. The thing is, when you're saying that Brianna Wu's tolerance, uh, you know, is, is so low, it, it's that way intentionally because their thing is not to stick into a discussion. It's to not have a have a talk but have a justification for, I walked away because this person offended me. I mean, Anita Sarkeesian is the, is the most artful person on this. She actually canceled an entire talk and made a, made a lot of bank based upon the, uh, what seems to be a completely bogus threat. But this made is what considerably they did. more money by canceling it than she would have done by actually doing the talk, which I thought was interesting. If they're not offended, they have to manufacture it. It, it comes back to, I'm a victim, send me money. Yeah. And, and they're all doing model. it. For, for instance, um, even um, our buddy uh, Rebecca Watson is doing that oh, now, oh. where she has a, what does she have, a Patreon to do uh, um, videos, right? And she'll do videos based on the amount of money that she gets or whatever. And I haven't looked at her Patreon recently, but at one point, and this is a few months ago, it was you know over five hundred bucks per video. By the way, that's a per video thing. That I she never actually God, really? managed her, her to crap? sit through one of the videos. Well, well, what is she I'm actually there, making man. videos about? She did what a three minute video about? when she was changing a, a signal switch, uh, a, a turn signal switch in her car. I don't know how much she got paid for that. <laughs> Well, apparently, whatever it is, it's like so much. Every time she makes a, a video, she clicks on that, whatever it is, a Patreon or whatever, and gets paid that, again, at that oh time, God. $500 and something. Dollars. Yeah, right now, it's $961.50 per video. Per wow. video. Think about that, Mike. Yeah. We, we could retire on that. You know, and, you know, she it. has... In her videos, have they have no production values. There's, there's no research. They're thought they, – they are the classic webcam talking head stuff. Exactly. I actually have to get I out did. of here and go, go to work. Boy, don't I feel stupid. I have to get out of here and go to Patreon, man. <laughs>